Ian. How are we guys? You good? Doing good, man. How's things? Fight week in Boston. Uh, yes. Some changes to all of this, but you don't seem too concerned about that. But big fight on a big card. How are you thinking about things with this fight? New opponent just a few days away. <sighs> this is the thing with the fight game. It's infuriating at times. When you look at the welterweight division, you've had three three fights pull out in the last couple of weeks. You've had Jeff Neal pull out. You've had um, Wonder Boy's opponent, Michelle Pereira, pull out. And you've had Sean Brady pull out. It's part of the fight game. It's infuriating. It's upsetting for the fans because the fans initially buy into something and then it doesn't happen. And look, I'm upset with the change of opponent because I wanted to finish Neil, my, um, Jeff Neal the way I knew I was going to finish him. I feel like the fans deserve that finish. Now I've got another guy. Number 11 in the world. I'm still going to go out there and finish him. I'm still going to go out there and do it in a beautiful, spectacular fashion. But I feel like the fans are being robbed of something that they were excited about. And, I mean, this is the fight you wanted from Jump Street since the D-Rod fight. And you posted that video that, mm -hmm. that Jeff was out of the fight and you were disappointed. But then you're, you, you were able to sort of tap into this good karma, this good juju yes. with this whole, you know what? I might just get the name that I wanted in the first place. Mm -hmm. Where does that belief for you come from that things are just going to come up Ian Machado Gary in these situations. You've just got to operate in full faith, do you, and let the world work itself around you. At the end of the day, all I have to do is show up. It doesn't matter who is in that octagon against me or where it is. As long as I show up and do what I do best, there's no one that can beat me. Were there any other names presented to you besides Neil? Not that I know of. I sent the list of names. I'm not going to tell you the list of names I sent, but I sent a rake of names to the guys. and was like, make these happen. Make one of them happen. Um, Neil was obviously one of them, purely on the basis of he was the guy I called out in the first place. I wouldn't be upset about the Jeff Neal fight if they had given me Neil Magny, then Jeff Neal, but I'm, ex I'm upset about it because they gave me Jeff Neal. Now it's going backwards. So I was ready for eight in the world. I was excited to be eight in the world. Now I'm fighting 11 in the world. I'm still excited because at the end of the day, this breaks me into the top 10. Both these fights obviously present different challenges. Do you yes. feel like... Neil is tough is the tougher opponent, or do you feel like Jeff was sort of the tougher no, one? Oh th no, they they literally they're both irrelevant at the end of the day. The fact that I'm in that octagon is what's exciting. The truth is, they couldn't be more polar opposite. I was getting ready for a five foot not a five foot ten stocky southpaw power pun power puncher, to now fighting a long, lanky, rangy, awkward, clinchy orthodox. They couldn't get more different. But when I show up on Saturday night and I absolutely manhandle and manipulate. Neil Magny, to do whatever I please. He's going to be in here. And I'm going to do with him as I please because I'm that good. You'll see that I actually don't need that much time to get ready for a fight. Last thing for me. This may be shocking to you, Ian, but you got the fans talking. You confidently said something that riled some people up. Good. You said earlier this week, I believe that I'm carrying this 292 card on my back and that if it wasn't for me, this card would go down the drain. What, what do you say to those people who think you're crazy for saying that? Who in good fuck is waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning in Europe or the rest of the world for that matter to watch Aljamain Sterling and Sean O'Malley. They're waiting up for me. I can promise you that. They're waking up for me. They're staying there. They're tuning in for me because I'm a superstar in Europe. I've got an Irish nation behind me and a Brazilian nation behind me now and I'm excited to go out there and show that I am a superstar. Ian, outside this card, it's also been a big week for you in the business world. You yes, signed sir. Better and uh, Jake Paul. How did that deal come about? <sighs> Two young men taking over the world of combat sports in very different ways, and two people who like to be disruptive, two people who have a good social media mindset. I have a, I'm building a team behind me because I want fans, I want supporters, I want people who, who pay money, who watch, who sit down and take the time out of their lives to watch what we do. I want them to feel like they know everything about me and my life because of my social media. It, it's, it's a privilege that we have nowadays to have social media and to be able to t pull out a phone, go on Instagram and say, what is Ian Machado Gary doing in this world? What is X doing in this world? And I believe that Everybody, everybody is talking about Jake Paul because he's making all the right decisions when it comes to media and marketing, and he's a phenomenal promoter of himself. So yeah, yeah. we're going to work together and make some cool content. Was there any conflict in signing the dotted line, knowing his relationship with your idol Conor McGregor, and maybe like, oh, I don't want to pick one over the other or anything like that? If they have beef, that's between them. I'm an adult. I can have friends who don't like each other. 
How many people have asked you to set them up a fight with that Derek guy who works for Better? I told him when I seen him as a joke because I knew he was going to maybe start melting off. I said to him, don't you start coming looking at fucking me now. If you want to go, I'll do it now and we'll do it in that ring. There's a ring right there. We can do it right here. And he's like, no, I'll just wait till, I'll just wait till there's security around or I'll wait till you're behind a, an iPad or something. He's like, I'm not going to do it now. I mean, if you want to hook anyone up, give me a shout. <laughs> Ian, over to you right here. Um, How are you, sir? Good. How are you? I'm fucking great. Um, we, you mentioned the rankings earlier, and I know you're a guy that's like likes to visualize things. I mean, from the time that you announced your UFC signing, you know, you declared you're going to be a champion one mm -hmm. day, stuff like that. So, how many fights away do you feel like you are right now from getting a title shot in your mind? Four. 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 I told everyone I have a six fight plan. This is this is another fight. This gives me 15 and 11 in the world. This breaks me into the top 10 now. Then there's a lot of a lot of amazing fights in the top 10. But I don't want to be one of these guys that are rushed up the rankings, rushed up to a title shot. We've seen it far too many times. People go, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then they end up going on this skid and their career gets a bit wavy. The truth is, I'm young. I'm 25 years of age. I have no need to rush. I know how good I am. I know how good I will be in two more years. So why not take those two more years? If I told you right now, let me just pull four names out of the top ten. I fought Jeff Neal, Wonderboy, Usman, and Kobe Covington in the next two years and then got a title shot. Would anyone be disappointed by those four opponents? No. There's an insane amount of matchups in the top 10 that I can learn, grow, and evolve and showcase to the fans, to the UFC as an organization, and to myself how good I am. And I'm excited by that. So I don't want to jump the ladder. I don't want to skip anything. I want to do it my way, the right way. And Neil was the guy that you wanted next, as, as Mike referenced. So I guess, why? Why is he the next right step. Someone said to me earlier on today, and I think this is nuts, Neil Magny's been fighting professionally since I was 12. That's insane. He's been ranked since before I was an amateur. So now I'm stepping up against a guy who's been in there with some of the best, who's beaten some of the best, lost to some of the best, but has faced that competition. He's coming into that octagon. He doesn't care who I am or what I'm doing. He's faced so many guys that he is in here and he is trying to implement his game plan and do what he does best. It is my job to prove that I'm far too good for him to have any success in this octagon. And since, again, since you signed with the UFC, the, the Conor McGregor comparisons mm -hmm. have come because of your nationality. Um, but fighting here in Boston, I mean, we've seen the sort of pops that the Irish fighters have gotten here before. So I guess, what do you think that environment is gonna be like on Saturday compared to your other fights? I am extremely excited to be in Boston, to put on a show in Boston. I feel like Boston is like a home away from home. I went out in the streets yesterday, I met so many Irish, like I had so many Irish accents. It was really cool to experience that. I miss Dublin. I've been traveling out with suitcase for two years. I've been traveling the world, trying to learn, grow and get better. And I'm, I'm excited to go home after this fight and do a victory lap. Um, I just, I'm excited for the Irish fans for the Irish media, for the UFC to have an, a UFC top 10 Irish welterweight break in in Boston, put on a show, give the fans what they want. And I'm telling you, when I walk out, you are going to hear that energy from the Irish supporters because I tell you now, we are the best in the world. I saw Connor was in your Instagram comments wishing you well. Have you talked to him at all beyond that? And um, I think Brad Katona had done an interview with TSN this morning saying that he's supposed to be at this event. I mean, if he's at the event, it would make sense with the tough final. I would, I would think that would be a smart business decision on the UFC's point of view. Um, the truth is with Connor, I need nothing from Connor. I've gotten every single bit of inspiration I've ever needed from Connor in his rise. And the truth is, I am just here to do my thing and have fun. And if he's here, amazing. He gets to watch me whoop ass. Thanks. Thank you. you. Over here to your left. How are you, sir? You good? Uh, I'm great. How are you doing? You got a good smile on your face. You've been, I've been watching you. You got a smile. This is fun. I, I, I love it, man. That's my baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect that. So you, um, <laughs> so you have this timeline. Yes, sir. And you say four fights, but where's a main event line up in that? Like, your next fight, main event? Like um, I believe the first main event I'll get will be when I bring the UFC back to Dublin. Um, I want to fight in... December in, in Vegas after this. This would be my third fight in five months, by the way. Like, I'm, I'm ridiculously active. I want to turn this around, beat Neil Magny with ease, go in there and fight one of the guys in the top 10, and then it's unquestionable, it's unarguable, that you have to bring me back to Dublin, Ireland. You have to put the UFC on in the three arena or whatever venue you guys want to and make me a main event against another top 10 guy. Uh, 
obviously you were scheduled against Jeff Neal. It got changed to Neil Magny. Uh, you know, you talked about how different styles they are. Which one's the tougher style? Both guys possess different threats in there when you think of them as opponents. But the truth is, no, it doesn't matter to me. I don't focus on my opponent. I focus on myself. When I'm watching an opponent, I don't see what he's good at. I see what I can do. I look at it from a point of view of purely success. What can I do to have the most success against this guy? What, what holds can I see? And I've seen a lot of holds of both, in both guys. So I was just, I'm just going to take advantage of whoever I'm fighting and go in there and just showcase the, the stuff that I've found and break them down. I believe this one's going to be, this one's going to be more pace. I believe this one's going to be output. Neil's, uh, Neil's good. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not underestimating Neil. I know what he's doing. I know who he's, he's been in the UFC for 30 fights. Do you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Um, he goes in and wins fights that he shouldn't necessarily win because he fights his way. However, my intelligence is far too high for him to be able to do what he does to other people, to me. And I believe this one is going to be a high output, brutal finish that might be 30, 40 punches long. He's, I'm going to swing at him. He's going to miss. I'm going to hit him again. He's going to miss. And I'm just going to tactically just surgically dismantle him. It seems like the uh, mental aspect of the game is so important. It seems like something you're really good at. Mm -hmm. How do you balance being, obviously you hear fighters talk about, if I'm confident, I'm the best <laughs> in the world, but also not overlooking somebody so you don't get upset. How do I balance being confident and self-aware without being a massive dickhead? is basically what you're trying to say. It's, it's, it's just having full awareness of everything that you do. I said this to you the other day, I was speaking to Robert Whitaker on um, Fox Australia. If Neil Magny pulls out a sledgehammer in the middle of that octagon and tries to beat me with it, I still have to have the mindset that I'm gonna kill him. That you have to, you have to have everything up here needs to be 110% bulletproof. You cannot have any doubts because if you have doubts, then you can be broken and that I do not have. I do not have any doubts in where my career is, where it's going to be, how good I am, and how, going, how good I'm going to be. It's all in my head. I know I'm here. I am here. I am gifted. I'm just simply here to receive and just enjoy the process. Uh, my last question. You said, you know, you're carrying 292 on your back. Media is talking about you. Fans talking about you. Sunday morning, what is the media and the fans saying about you? I was right. I'm a superstar. Good luck to you, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Ian, over here? How how are we? Good. How are you, man? I'm, I'm great. It's fight week. I get to have fun. Well, great to talk to you. And I'm just wondering, there was some animosity in the build-up a little bit, only for the fight to fall through. Is that Jeff Neal fight still going to happen someday? You still want that fight? I don't know if there's animosity. I would say it's very, very smart tactical mind games. Um, Jeff Neal had a mugshot. I found it. I printed it on a t-shirt. I sold a t-shirt. I wore it to UFC 291 for International Fight Week. And I believe that is 110% an absolute massive reason as to why he pulled out. I don't know if that fight's ever going to happen because I feel like I've already beat him. So if it's something that the UFC are absolutely adamant to push, I'll have that conversation. But I feel like I've already done the camp, won the fight, and now I'm focused on somebody else. And then last one from me, uh, Killcliffe was just nominated for Gym of the Year for the World MMA Awards. Yes. Can you just speak on what it's like training with such a talented gym that's now getting a lot of attention? They've been getting a lot of attention for a long time. They've got a lot of people in that gym that are absolutely phenomenal. And the thing that I'm, I'm excited about most is when we talk about the people that that gym possesses, what about like the fact that I'm a nomadic fighter training all around the world with all of these different fighters. I'm able to learn and soak up knowledge from every different gym that I'm ever going to. I've been in Killcliffe. I was recently in Shoot the Box. I've been in Renegade in Birmingham. I want to go to um, New Zealand and train with Adesanya and City Kickboxing because I believe they're phenomenal. And I am someone who has such a thirst for knowledge and wants to be the absolute best I can be. And I believe the best thing for that is traveling the world and training with some of the best the world has to offer. Thank you. Over here on your left. One second. I think you were first. I seen you. I seen you ju jump in. So sorry. One second. Go ahead. Hey, Ian, how are you? Um, so throughout your time in the UFC, you fought on some really, really big cards. Yeah. And you've stayed very active. Yes, when, sir. When Boston was announced, was that a card that you wanted to jump on? And, and what's your excitement level for this fight compared to previous cards that you've been on? The first time I heard about Boston was after I knocked out D-Rod. Dana, Hunter, and Sean came back to me backstage, and they said, we want you on Boston. We want to make it happen. I was like, all right, let's figure it out. Um, I think, look, 
I have a lot of support from Ireland and now Brazil. There's a lot of support from, in my fan base now from Brazil. The two biggest Irish and Brazilian con uh, contingents in America is in Boston. So I'm going to have a massive following for this fight. And you're going to see it and you're going to feel it in that, in that stadium. You're going to feel that energy. I'm excited to put on a show for the fans. I'm excited to show up and do what I do best, which is enjoy my job. My job is to show up on fight night and have fun. If you think about this as a job, you're in, the wrong, you're in the wrong industry. You need to have fun. I get to do what I love every single day, and I get to do it under the bright lights. So for me, I just want the fans to feel the same energy that I have. Thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Appreciate you, man. Ian, we asked you last year who you thought would be the next Irish fighter to hit the UFC, uh, to which you responded Paul Hughes with no hesitation at all. Uh, with the new crop of Irish fighters that are in the promotion now, he seems like the odd man out at this stage. What do you make of his uh, situation? I think it's ridiculous that he wasn't the first guy signed. I think it's insane. Um, he's so talented. He puts on so, such good fights. And for me, he was the next, the next guy that should have been signed. I'm not telling the UFC what they should do, but that was their, that's their decision. They signed who they wanted to sign, and that's up to them. I just think Paul Hughes absolutely deserves a UFC contract. And uh, do you have an official prediction for this fight? Eight minutes. I don't know how. I, it, I, I haven't, haven't seen it yet, but I don't see him lasting longer than eight minutes. He's far too slow. He's not as technically sound as I am. He hasn't got the tools that I have, and he... He's, frankly, he's just not as good as me in every single aspect of the game. So, yeah, whether he wants to clinch and I sub him unconscious or whether I, I beat his ass for 15 seconds and then I do it again for another 15 seconds and another 15 seconds of combinations and just speed, he can pick his poison. All right, thanks, Ian. Appreciate you. Yeah, one last one real quick. Um, main event, Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley. Put your analyst hat on for us for a moment. Who do you think wins that one? It's hard to argue with what Aljo has done in his last couple of fights, in his last few fights. Like, everybody's been doubting him, and like he says, Aljo has been upsetting the UFC's kind of apple cart, per se. But I think the, the body of work he's done is unquestionable. I think from a brand point of view, I think the UFC want O'Malley to win. But I'd, 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 to be honest, I couldn't give a fuck. I don't care who wins. At the end of the day, if I get a number 10 or less beside my name, that's all that matters to me on this fight card. So, yeah. Just want a prediction from you for the welterweight title fight. Ooh, that's a nice accent. That's a, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Go on, yeah. Between Leon Edwards and... Yeah. <laughs> Between Leon Edwards and... Kobe. Kobe. I think Leon absolutely smashes him. Kobe, Kobe gets a lot of hype for nothing. Kobe, ha the biggest thing Kobe Covington has done is lose to Kamar Usman twice. Twice. Leon has gone out and beat Kamar Usman twice. I think Leon is going to absolutely surgically and like just, I think he's going to dominate him. I've, I've trained with Leon. I know how good Leon is. Leon's a phenomenal athlete. Um, he's amazing in every single aspect of the game. His, un his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu is so underrated because people talk about it as a kickboxer. I guarantee you he absolutely runs through Kobe. I guarantee it. But also, to have one more point from my point of view. To all the UFC fans that have been asking, where can you meet me? Where can we do a, a, fa a face-off? Where can we see you? Friday, keep, keep active on Instagram. I'm going to be doing a secret workout somewhere, so just keep active. 8 p.m. Friday night, you can come see me and we can do some, some Q&As and watch some cool, some, all you guys are all invited if you want to come, by the way. Just keep, just keep an eye on the Instagram, 8 p.m. Boston. Appreciate you guys, thank you so much. This is my last interview outside the top 10 forever. I'm never, ever, ever going back.